anthem. <laughs> yeah, we'll start now, actually. Um, and we'll get straight into the topic, which is uh, Mass Effect slash Bioware. I was into sure I was going to start this one because I was thinking about just getting straight into Mass Effect 4, right? But <laughs> you could introduce us. <laughs> Man, the introduction shit. Okay, fine. <laughs> you got to. Okay. You can't like okay. you can't assume that everybody knows who we are <laughs> every single episode. <laughs> Welcome everybody to the Bioware Mass Effect podcast. But but I think at the end of the day, really what matters is do you have like that big visionary, that Casey Hudson, that someone that can, you know, like push a, a new IP forward. Because I actually don't think it, if it matters that oh all, mo, I like I don't I wouldn't say you want to fire the whole studio because I think at the end of the day as bad as this sounds I don't think most of the studio really matters most of the people are just going to be doing grunt work every day they're going to come in there's your assignment get it done and as long as you're competent enough at programming or art or whatever it is you get your thing done you just need a couple of visionaries right so whoever is at the helm or I guess we'll find out because I think those things can change that's why you can go from having like a Mass Effect series to like Andromeda and that's why these game studios are, are like Blizzard or like Bethesda that's why you can go from one game that people like to just instantly feeling like you fell because maybe some people left and got better opportunities and it only takes a couple big visionaries leaving yeah. and everything falls apart but so in terms of op- optimism right um I'm, I'm I'm quite optimistic about the series going forward and I think it has primarily more to do with what i think about ea and and how i think they've kind of shifted in the way they make games um i don't think they're focusing too much on the microtransactions elements i don't think they're they're pushing multiplayer and we know that's a that's been confirmed a little bit um dan do you do you share the same optimism as me or do you think bioware is pretty much done because there is a lot of doom and gloom and then you know you see things like certain um, developers are leaving um certain um heads or whatever and then people turn around and say, well, okay, Dragon Age has been rebooted a few times now, um, I think. And that just that's just a bad sign. Uh, what are your thoughts on that? Um, so I think the original question was like, can they recapture what they were? And I and I don't uh, I don't necessarily think that's an option at this point. You know, it's it's not that it's not that I think that the studio is doomed. You know, I I don't think EA will just shut the whole studio down. Um, I think it's far more likely that, in absolute worst case scenario, they'll probably sell the the studio out from from within EA. But even that feels unlikely. It's to me, Bioware isn't dying. It's they've sort of been dead for a while. You know, and. I think that I've sort of come to terms with that and I'm just kind of okay with it because it's like this studio can still be good. You know, they can bring on new people, they can put out good games, but it's not going to be what Bioware used to be. Um, and, and I don't even mean that in terms of quality. I just mean like it, it won't the feel the same gone. because the people who created it aren't there anymore. There's, I don't think there's a single original leadership member still standing at Bioware. Bioware has made some of the best games franchises ever made, right? They made, you know, Knights of the Old Republic and and Mass Effect and Dragon Age and and Jade Empire. And, you know, I think that that's, that that was sort of like lightning in a bottle. It was, that was able to be done because of the team that they had at the time. And that team is now gone and doing their own things. So, can Bioware be good again? Yes, but they'll never be Bioware again. Yeah, Mike, what are, what are your thoughts on this? Um, Bioware is going to reclaim the title back as a top tier developer or are they washed? Or are we just going to be somewhere in the middle where like they release a good enough game for the fans, but nothing too special? Alrighty, so that's a very multi-layered question. Can you guys hear me fine? Yeah, we can hear you. Like I moved my, I moved my mic, but alrighty. Uh, it's an, it's an extremely hard question to answer because, as far as potential is concerned, yes, they can they can reclaim it. Everything is anything is possible. They can reclaim it, but making a video game is extremely hard. And not only is it extremely hard, but also a lot of things have to fall perfectly. So when you make a game and not only do you make a game but you make a classic and you make it 
more than once. So that means obviously there's talent there, right? There's talent, there's vision, there's a lot of things that you need to make a classic game and you could do it uh, at a higher scale. Cause you go, one is a classic, two is one of the greatest games of all time in Mass Effect. Will there ever be as great as Bioware was? Bioware is supposed to be Obsidian. If anybody wants to like have an apples to apples comparison, Bioware is supposed to be Obsidian. That's what they're supposed to be. They're supposed to be one of the best RPG developers in any way, shape, or form. Whether it's uh, the Outer Worlds in an RPG, um, space opera R RPG, or is it uh, their brand new Avowed, which is going to be a Skyrim-like game. However you want to put it, Bioware is supposed to be doing that. And sadly, they have fallen from grace. Now, do I believe that they'll reclaim a title? It's it's too hard. It's too hard to tell. There there there's a lot of there's a lot of missing people there that they need. But it's like even if they come back, let's say we call everybody back, everybody who used to be part of Bioware back, right? There's no telling that off of the damage that their relationships have incurred. There's no telling that they'll be able to make another great game. Some of that resentment might be still there. Some of those emotions might be still there. Some of that like vitriol might be still there so they could all come back together and be like yo let's do it like the old days and it comes out subpar again because they're not the same people anymore one of the hardest problems they have to solve is weirdly enough i feel like if you take too much because we keep talking about the krogan and the asari and blah and I, obviously those are going to be in the game and we want to see those backstory in mass effect 4 but what made originally Maybe that's effect, the issue yeah what made us fall in love with it was that was all new like yeah. in a lot of ways this game needs to be like hey yeah we obviously uh, here's the story ending here's what happened here's the world here's all those old you know races but what was so magical and i'm all, i'm a mass effect one um whore <laughs> so but basically what happened is to... you would land at the citadel and what made me fall in love with Mass Effect is you go through the first mission and you land at the Citadel. And more than any other game I've ever played in my life, you just started finding tons of random stuff, a bunch of new races, and you would go to your codex and you would just sit there. Like literally you would just sit on your couch, you would open up a codex with paragraphs of text and you would just sit there with a huge smile on your face. Well, it read everything to you because you were like, I'm in a completely new world. I don't know what's going on. I want to learn how the technology works. Who are these blue people? Where are they from? Oh my God, they're all girls. Like what's happening? And they have sex with me through telepathy. Like what is going on? Like this is crazy. And there's frog people. And like, and, and, and like, I want that feeling. Why is this reporter talking shit to me? Yeah. Like I want Mass Effect 1 to be more, I want Mass Effect, or sorry, 4 to be Mass Effect 1 again. I don't want it to just be Mass Effect 3.5, you know, and here's our story yeah. continued in the universe. Like I want to feel like, I want to feel that sense of discovery. That magic again, again right? Yeah, that, and I, that was and, magic. Yeah, and I think that's I think that's the main thing, right? For for oh. that to happen, I think we do need new races, and I think Mass we Effect need... Andromeda Two, baby, confirmed. No, 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 no. We we need we need a few new races, right? But we also need some of these races to be like, hey, wait, we just didn't come out of nowhere, right? You know, like we've actually been in the Milky Way, just hiding or whatever. So we have on history and lore. That'd be so cool. Out. Oh, that'd be so cool. Yeah. And I think they need to like be, you, you need to have like environments where you can explore. So like, you know, think about the city though, right? But think about like cities now, you know, you can actually like go and like see how, you know, the culture of this, um, this particular race or whatever it is. I think they need to be a lot of new elements that kind of keeps your interest, right? Because when um when i'm watching those starfield diary stuff and they're talking about how well this group and this faction and my mind is getting blown i'm thinking that's so freaking interesting so i think we need elements of that i would love it if for example if this is 800 years later right that's cool you need to tell me everything that's been happening in between there i need yeah, to need know context exactly i need to know that there was a civil war and then this group yep. won and then that group did this and then that group did yep. that I, it needs to be interlinked to somewhere i need to be able to dive into that lore and like you know fall in love with it again so mm -hmm. i think you make yeah. a very good point there think... you, you can't we can't get that magic back back but you can somehow re replicate it in a, in a different form exactly yeah uh, I, I don't think that you necessarily have to introduce new races for that like you look at the the original trilogy and we really only focus on like humans asari turians krogans and salarians and that's pretty much it but like there's other races in there that i feel like you could pry into deeper and make them more interesting like like what like what the hell's a batarian or like let's go and figure like go to one of the vorcha home worlds and see what that's about or like maybe we get an elkor on the team and we get like blasto 
where the Han are. Like, I want to find out. Like, I would love to see the home world where the Han are are like sheltering the surviving Drell. Like, that would be really interesting. Like, there's so many things in the existing universe of Mass Effect already that could be explored that I feel like could give you that feeling of like new discovery without it being like, and now there's these guys and they look like dogs like just random just some new fucking <laughs> alien race like you know what i mean you see I I wear all these ideas man we got you you see it's i mean I do yeah, agree. I'm, not, I'm not mad on an animal civilization or <laughs> a, a civilization based off of different species of animals that are sentient like i'm not mad at anything that has to do with anything different as long as you make it so choice and consequence because it does it, at the end of the day it's not going to matter if it's cthulhu looking people with squid heads it's not going to matter if it's fire a ghost rider fire skull dude it's not going to matter anything like that if the dialogue and the things that are being said and given to us in terms of lore in terms of writing in terms of what is being said and in terms of choice and consequence if those four things aren't being nailed we're not going to feel like this is mass effect anyway because the, the times we've had mass effect at its top point it's because all four of those, all four of those combined came together into one and made it into this inclusive thing where you would sit down and listen to the codex. You would like to talk to every single person inside of the uh, inside of the Citadel. You would like to have conversations with Garrus and see exactly what his mindset and his process is. When you talk to Jax down in the hub of that ship, even though she was an absolute mad woman. I feel like with Andromeda, right, there wasn't any really big decisions to make and i think that was obviously by design because they're they're afraid of you know hey remember what happened with mass effect 3 where everything was like everyone was like oh well i saved this person one and two and three (laughs) so like what's happening now like how does this decision in two affect this and that and three so i feel like well okay the question is the the question is do you want this like because i I want them to play safe right i mean i want these you know important decisions but i want them to play safe first of all and then build off that do you want these decisions to carry over to carry on through the next game because i think as soon as we start doing that it becomes a lot more complex it becomes complicated and i don't know if bioware can actually like you know fulfill that um that feeling of like i did this in one and i did that in one as well and then that's affected this in number two and two and three the last thing you need is people saying yo this is red blue green and orange now I think if they want to recapture the Bioware name, then they need to do that. They need to do. They need to have it so that your choices carry over between games. And if they, if they want to prove that they're better than old Bioware, then they need to put out a new trilogy of games, whether it's Mass Effect or Dragon Age or something new. Do storylines that carry over between all three of them and choices that matter between all three of them, and have them actually pay off in like full tilt in the last game. But that's what they have to do if they want to if they want to come back and be like new bioware better than the old bioware anything less than that it might be good games but it's not going to feel the same 